What is going on guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now in this video we are going to talk about the partition algorithm. It is a very common problem that may be even asked in a lot of tech interviews, especially among software engineers. And as simple as this algorithm may sound, it is actually the core for much more complex algorithms like the quicksort, which is a sorting algorithm. Finding the kth smallest or largest element within an array and many, many more. So get yourself ready and I'll see you right here. Let's go. So what is the problem? Suppose you've got a collection of elements and you have to choose one element, let's call it pivot, and put it in such a place that all elements on its left are smaller than it and all the elements on its right are greater than it. Meaning we're simply taking some collection of elements for example, you may be familiar with arrays or tuples and then partitioning or splitting this collection into two parts, the left part and the right part. Our algorithm is just some steps to be taken, such as after they are taken, we know that the chosen pivot will be at its correct position as previously explained. So step number one, get your collection of elements. Step number two, choose your pivot. Pick an element, the pivot. For now, we'll pick the pivot as the first element, the leftmost one. Step number three, set up left and right cursors. At this step, we'll define two cursors which will help us with implementing this algorithm. The left cursor will indicate the leftmost element of a given collection, and the right one will indicate the rightmost element. The final step, the goal is very simple. We would like that the left cursor will point only to elements that are smaller than the pivot, which in our example is five, and that the right cursor will point only to elements greater than five. So if the left cursor points to an element smaller than pivot, then it's okay and we can move on to, with the left cursor one element to the right. If left is greater than pivot, then we should stop moving the left cursor. And we should focus from now on on the right one. If the right cursor is greater than the pivot, then it's okay and you may go left, otherwise stop, which is exactly the case right now. Four is not greater than five. That's exactly why we should stop, because you remember that we want to keep the right cursor pointing only to elements greater than the pivot, and the left cursor pointing only to the elements smaller than the pivot. Once you've stopped, you will point with the left cursor to the element greater than the pivot and with the right cursor to an element smaller than the pivot. That's the stopping condition. And if that's the case, we should swap. Exactly how we are doing it right here. Okay, so now four and seven were swapped. Repeat the previous step while the right cursor is greater than the left, meaning until they would have crossed or passed one another. Just like we can see it here, when both cursor point to the same element, the number two. And now, as the final step of the partition algorithm, all that remains is just to make a swap between the pivot and the element pointed by the right cursor, which is in our case. Two. We can see that all the elements greater than the pivot, which is 5, are on its right side and all the elements which are smaller than the pivot are on its left. And that's exactly what we expected our algorithm to do. So that's it for the partition algorithm. It was a quick summary of the main steps to be taking for implementing this algorithm. And if you would like to know more how this algorithm may be implemented in different programming languages, let me know in the comments below. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.